Welcome to Florida Hospital's patient education video. The purpose of this video is to prepare you or your loved one for abdominal surgery as your safety and well-being are priority. The information in this video will guide you from the planning of your surgery through your recovery. In addition to this video, your surgeon will provide information regarding the preparing for your surgery class. Please remember, any questions related to your surgery should be directed to your surgeon. Preparing for surgery starts at your surgeon's office. You can expect to get the following details. Type and name of surgery you'll be having. Date, time, and location of surgery. Possible risks or complications. Anticipated time in the hospital after surgery. Alternative treatment options. Any changes to your blood thinners or anticoagulants. Any medical clearance you may need. Pre-admission testing dates and location. Dates and times for preparing for your surgery class. In addition, you'll be signing your surgery consent form. Pre-admission testing involves completing the hospital registration process, having tests and blood work drawn, completing a personal health history, review of any medication or supplements that you're taking, verification of existing advanced directives or living wills, receiving pre-operative instructions such as diet and bathing guidelines, verifying the date and time of surgery, and review of parking and surgery location. You'll also receive a folder of information and chlorhexidine gluconate soap, also known as CHG. We'll go over the CHG bathing process later in the video. Here are some suggestions on things to bring to the hospital. Paperwork received at the pre-admission testing appointment. ID and insurance card. A list of your current medications. And a toothbrush, comb, or brush and non-skid slippers. We would suggest leaving the following at home. Your wallet or purse. Cash and credit cards. Jewelry and medications, unless your surgeon told you otherwise. If you have any additional questions about what to bring, please contact your surgeon's office. We suggest keeping all valuables at home unless you have someone that can keep them secure during your surgery. Diet prior to surgery is important, especially the week leading up to surgery. We recommend you follow a healthy diet, rich in fruits and vegetables. We suggest that you avoid alcohol completely and limit your red meat intake. You'll need to stop eating solid foods after midnight the night before surgery. Your surgeon will advise you on consuming liquids and if there are any routine medicines you can take on the morning of your surgery. If you're taking aspirin, ibuprofen, or are on any blood thinners, please follow the instructions given by your surgeon as these may be stopped prior to your surgery. One of the items that you'll receive in pre-admission testing is a bottle of chlorhexidine gluconate, or CHG soap. This soap helps lower the number of germs on your skin and will help prevent infections during and after your surgery. Do not shave near the area where surgery will be performed and do not apply any lotions, perfumes, deodorants, or powders after any of the CHG showers. You'll need to take two showers with this soap. The first should be the night before your surgery. The second should be the morning of your surgery. Wear clean clothes and sleep on clean sheets after your first shower. Do not allow pets to sleep in your bed after your CHG showers. As always, follow your surgeon's instructions if they differ from those in this video. Remember to bring your folder from pre-admission testing on the day of your surgery and give it to the nurse when you arrive at preoperative holding. You will then be asked to change into a hospital gown prior to having your IV started and labs drawn. Additional healthcare team members will introduce themselves to you in pre-operative holding. 
These may include preoperative holding nurse, operating room nurse, wound care nurse for possible ostomy location, anesthesia team, and surgeon. Our team will place you under sedation once in the operating room. A breathing tube and urinary catheter will be inserted and maintained through the surgery. When the surgery is complete, you'll be moved to the recovery room. You may feel very sleepy and some irritation in your throat. Please notify your nursing team of any discomfort or pain you may experience. One of the main goals in the recovery room is to make you as comfortable as possible and they'll strive to achieve this for you. You'll remain in the recovery room until the anesthesia wears off and it's safe to move you to a patient room. The nurse will bring your family in for a quick visit and then guide them to a comfortable waiting room. Families are unable to stay in the post-anesthesia care unit for lengthy periods of time. Please note, you may have an IV, urinary catheter, nasogastric tube, and nasal cannula through your recovery. Once you've settled in, your nurse will help orientate you with your room and any routines of the floor. You may notice that there are a few supplies that have been brought from the recovery room. One item you will be given is an incentive spirometer. This is a device that is meant to help you take deep breaths to prevent pneumonia during your hospital stay. You'll also notice a machine called a sequential compression device at the foot of your bed. It is used to promote circulation and prevent blood clots by gently squeezing your legs from time to time. You'll also be able to address any pain you experience with any medicines through your IV, epidural, or pills. You will also have non-medicinal options like ice, heat, distraction, and relaxation techniques. The recovery process begins with education prior to surgery. Here are some steps we'll be taking to promote a faster recovery. IV fluids. These may be discontinued as you begin drinking. Tube and drains will be evaluated daily and removed ASAP. Sitting up in a chair for all meals. Walking the day after surgery. And use of the incentive spirometer at least once an hour when awake. Diet and nutrition is critical to your healing and recovery. Eating after surgery will typically begin with clear liquids and progress to a regular diet as ordered by your surgeon. Fluids may be administered through your IV and, depending on the surgery, you may receive nutrients through a feeding tube. It's important to accept recommended supplements or tube feedings. Your pain medications will transition to pills or tablets as your diet advances. During your stay, a team will be assigned to you to assist in your recovery. Team members may include a chaplain, social worker, care manager, physical therapist, occupational therapist, nutritionist, wound and ostomy care nurse. The number of days you'll be in the hospital will depend on the type of surgery you've had. There are criteria that all surgical patients must meet prior to going home. This includes tolerating your diet, good pain management, no sign of a fever or infection, normal lab work, and your ability to get up and walk around. Each patient has different needs and some may require some assistance to continue their recovery. This can include the use of a home care service, medical equipment, or medications. The care management team is here to assist you in meeting your needs. You'll be given detailed discharge instructions as well as prescriptions and follow-up appointments with your surgeon. It's important that you follow your discharge instructions and to keep up with your follow-up appointments. If you have any questions regarding your recovery after discharge, please contact your surgeon's office. Thank you for watching Florida Hospital's preoperative patient education video.